this is Lori. I'm going to be starting out today. I'm going to guess that everyone has read the course description, otherwise they wouldn't have been here. Um, and we also have our learning objectives today, which I believe you also were provided when you signed up. So again, won't spend too much time on that. So as Maria alluded to, our, our session today is going to kind of be broken into two halves. The first half I'll start um, and I'll talk a little bit about the IBC and IRC recognition of the Wood Frame Construction Manual or WFCM as we call it. And then uh, some background and some assumptions that were used in, in developing the WFCM. And then we're also going to use some uh, do some design examples using the 2015 special design provision for wind and seismic or sometimes you'll hear me refer to it as SPIDWIZ. Uh, the reason you might notice that we're doing 2015 SPIDWIZ and 2018 WFCM uh, is there there's not a 2018 version of the special design provision for wind and seismic so the 2015 version would be still considered the most up-to-date and that is also th where the design values for shear walls and diaphragms and things like that those are all coming from the 2015 special design provisions for wind and seismic so you'll see that when we're doing um some design examples later the the design values are consistent regardless of which document you're designing from so the 2018 WFCM is referenced in both the 2018 IRC and IBC. Uh, it does have some uses. It's primarily for uh, residential structures, so it does have uh, uses beyond single-family structures. It can be used uh, for one and two family dwellings, is in fact in the, the title of the document. But you can see it's permitted in IRC R301 per the alternate provisions. If you go into IBC section 2301.2, you'll see it referenced there as well. Now there is a caveat when you're using it for an IBC structure. The structure needs to be assigned in a risk category 1 or 2. And you also need to meet the limitations of the wood frame construction manual document and we'll talk about what some of those those requirements are they're typically related to the size of the building and the loads but for light commercial structures the wood frame construction manual can be a very useful tool in determining things like the loads on the structure as well as your uh, design parameters for th things like shear wall design so those applicability limits that, that I mentioned and that were also mentioned in the IBC section language, you'll see that the mean roof height is limited to 33 feet and the number of stories in the structure is limited to three stories. There's also length, length and width limitations of 80 feet. That, that would be in plan. Uh, and then there's also, you'll see limits uh, on the, the loads that are applied to the structure. So uh, that, that's related to your gravity loads here. Uh, you'll see we have snow loads that can go up to 70 pounds per square foot. Um, but primarily what we're interested today in are going to be the wind and seismic loads. So for wind, it covers pretty much everything in the United States on the ASC-7 wind map. It'll go up to a 195 mile per hour wind gust. That's the three second gust. And you can do exposures B, C, or D. For seismic design, you are limited to up to a seismic design category D2. So if you're in a higher seismic design category than that, you'll need to use something else for your design. You'll have to engineer it probably using SpidWiz. But again, for non-residential structures, there are applications. Um, again, with a single story slab on grade structure, for example, that is within the length and width requirements of the document. Uh, this can be a, a great tool for designing shear walls and, and for designing floor ceiling assemblies and things like that. So for your light commercial retail structures or restaurants or office buildings and 
you can use it, I know we've talked about primarily wind and seismic, or we're going to be talking primarily about wind and seismic today, but it also can be used for all of your gravity load designs, and that includes things like headers over door and window openings in bearing walls and shear walls. So the wood frame construction manual itself only has three chapters. Chapter one is our general information chapter. It provides things like scope, uh, definitions, charging language, things of that nature.